Good morning. Today we'll be discussing tuning forks and the sound they produce. Tuning forks are used to tune pianos, and when they are struck, they begin to vibrate. Off camera, I struck the tuning fork with a rubber mallet. So what actually vibrates? The tines of the tuning fork vibrate. The tines are the parts of the tuning fork that I circled in a diagram. The tines will move outward, and then the tines will move inward. The outward and inward motion of the tines is repeated over and over. A single cycle is the movement of the tines outward and inward exactly one time. So notice on this tuning fork it says 1024. What does that actually mean? Well, in one second, the tines will move outward and inward 1,024 times. Or in one second, the tines will complete 1,024 vibrations, or cycles of motion. And so the frequency of this tuning fork is 1,024 cycles per second. Frequency is also measured in the unit called the hertz. So this tuning fork has a frequency of 1,024 hertz. The question is, can we measure it? And the answer is yes, we can measure the frequency. In a moment, we are going to play the tuning fork once again. And this time we are going to analyze the sound that the tuning fork makes using this program here. Notice on the x-axis, it states two milliseconds per division. And so the x-axis here is time. And all together, if we go from the beginning of the graph to the end of the graph, that represents 20 milliseconds, as every division is 2 milliseconds. And you can see it labeled there. Now I've taken a still frame from the video we just saw. We're going to analyze this image and count how many cycles there are. Let's roll the video of the analysis. Remember, a cycle is one crest and one trough. So one crest and one trough makes one cycle. Let's count. One cycle. Two cycles. Three. Four cycles so far. Five, six cycles. Remember, a cycle is a crest and a trough. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cycles, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16 cycles, 17, 18, 19, 20 cycles. Now we have to decide what fraction of a cycle is that final part. Well, it's less than a half, that's for sure. And it's more than a quarter. Quarter would be there. So let's call that a third. So we've just counted 20 and a third cycles. To determine frequency, we also need to know the time. Notice here it says 2 milliseconds per division. That means that from here to there, that's 2 milliseconds. So let's count the total time now. This is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20 milliseconds. So we have 20 and a third cycles divided by 20 milliseconds. That's how we're going to determine our frequency today. So we counted 20.33 cycles in 20 milliseconds. Recall that a millisecond 
is one one thousandth of a second. So 20 milliseconds is 0 decimal zero two zero seconds. Calculating frequency. Frequency is the number of cycles over the total amount of time. We count to 20.33 cycles. Total time is 20 milliseconds or 0 0.020 seconds. And we get a value very close to 1024 hertz, 1017 hertz. And ultimately, if we look at the edges of the image, we had to sort of estimate the 0.33. And it was probably slightly higher. Now we're going to look at another type of software that analyzes sound. Notice on the x-axis it says frequency. So this time we'll be looking at frequency, not time, on the x-axis. Let's roll the video. Tuning fork, 1024 hertz. Here is a still frame from the video we just saw. Notice that the spike occurs somewhere between 1000 and 1100 hertz. And in fact, if you look where my arrow is pointing, that seems to be a quarter of the way between these two divisions, between 1100 and 1000 hertz. So we can use this software to analyze the frequency of any sound, not just a tuning fork. And we'll see other videos that show this software in action analyzing other sounds made, including our voice and that of a stringed instrument. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something about tuning forks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.